what's up guys and so I'm back after having been gone a while you know it is probably I'm probably going to make more videos and once we actually know who the current president is right now I feel that uh, court battles and controversies make it so complicated so I'm going to talk about the house races the reason why is that the Republicans have been sweeping extremely close house races all across the country from west to east. Only one house race is currently outstanding. Uh, the New York Times map shows two outstanding. But the miracle in Iowa, we can say that the, Mar that the Republican candidate, Marianette Miller Meeks, has won with six votes. Other networks have called it, uh, New York Times have not called it, but this is a Republican with six votes. It's uh, extremely narrow to replace retiring Democrat David Loebsack. So uh, that's impressive. Uh, not so close, but still very close in California. Mike Garcia has won his race by uh, just over 300 votes. This was a nail-biter. He won his uh, seat in the special election earlier. I made a vi video. I have commented on the fact that I uh, did not uh, like uh, Christy Smith's uh, mocking of uh, people who serve. Uh, it, it was, of course, used in a very good ad. Uh, I've been in the military, don't like that, yay, good, Mike Garcia is going back to the U.S. house. Uh, not so close race in the California 21st district, still about 1,500 votes, uh, almost a point, but much fewer people cast their votes in that district, I wonder why. The part of the country where we have really been waiting for the results, especially in New York Times, is uh, New York. Uh, they have been really late in calling it here, even though we knew for quite some time that Lee Selden, for example, had won his uh, race in uh, the first district quite comfortably, and uh, Andrew Garbiano replacing Peter King, that was also expected, even though some networks had that as a pure toss-up. It ended up being, being a quite good win for the Republican candidate Andrew Garbiano. Now, the big one that is actually still outstanding, I've talked about, is uh, Anthony Bernice versus Claudia Tenney. Uh, Anthony Bernice is the incumbent Democrat. He, right now, is far behind in this uh, page on New York Times, but uh, uh, there are recounts, uh, other networks are having it much closer, so I have no idea which way this is going to go. When it comes to New Jersey, there was a close race, Tom Malinowski ended up defeating Thomas Keene, it appears, and of course the big flip in New York, uh, Nicole Maliotakis defeating Max Ross by a very substantial margin in Staten Island, a very Republican area in New York. So what does this make it up? Well, with Iowa, which New York Times have not yet called, the Republicans have 212 seats in the US House. 212 to the Democrats, 223, yeah, that's about right. So an 11 seat advantage for the Democrats, so still in double digits, but just barely. And uh, this comes from several wins across the country. Republicans have flipped a seat in Utah, in Oklahoma, in Minnesota, in Michigan, in New York, in South Carolina, two seats in Florida, two in Iowa, and three in California, four if you count the special election earlier this year. So this adds up to a number of seats that the Republicans won by a very narrow margin, including some that uh, the Democrats thought were a lock on. For example, uh, those two in California, those two in Florida, especially the one in uh, the Miami suburbs. The bigger district was slightly more uh, Republican. So uh, Republicans have actually won seven districts that were considered to go to the Democrats. They have not lost a single toss-up. Uh, if you say that uh, the suburban seat of Rob Woodall in Georgia is a toss-up, there was, I saw that 538 really is as a toss-up, but most uh, actually had that as a lean Democrat. So Republicans have not lost a single toss-up district. Now, what does this mean for 2021? Well, the Democrats need to have a bigger emphasis on getting every single Democrat on board, because 
Now they have lost most of their moderates. Most of the Blue Dog Coalition, I think, has been thrown out. So they will uh, really struggle to gain traction. The Democratic Party is much more partisan because the moderates once were defeated by Republicans. So Pelosi, if she continues as speaker, will have a harder time to get legislation through because she has to get basically almost all Democrats in the party with her, even though there are much fewer blue dogs. But the real change is still in the US Senate. It's all about Georgia. Georgia, Georgia, Georgia. What happens in Georgia, its consequences will be tremendous. Oh, forget everything about positivity. Pelosi has been re-elected speaker by House Democrats and we have to survive two other years with her. Okay. So unless there are some brave Democrats out there in the House, which I doubt, we will have to survive another two years with Nancy Pelosi as uh, the Speaker of the US House of Representatives. Hopefully with a bit less influence than what we have seen last time. It all depends. Joe Biden is probably at this point going to be sworn in as president. He is probably not going to have a Democratic Senate, which means that the big uh, the big fights, the big battles, it will, it will be all about the Senate. And uh, hopefully the country will succeed despite the current turmoil and division. Should nothing happen and Joe Biden becomes sworn in and president on January 20th, I, in particular, will definitely pray for his health. I do not want him to throw in the towel and let his vice president take over. That would be the last thing I want. And we all know that after two years of Obama, there was a red wave. After two years of Clinton, there was a red wave. After two years of Biden, there will be a red wave. So keep faith. Stay strong. We will get through this. We will get through this with increased Republican caucus in the U.S. House. Thank you. Have a nice day and I'll see you next time.